folks, Lester here. A couple of y'all have noticed that there's some babies in our pasture that uh, don't always live here. And you're wondering who these guys belong to, where they came from. And so today we're going to address that. Uh, now these goats belong to my sister-in-law, Stephanie. She's married to Buddy, the beer brewer. And you've also seen Stephanie in some videos. She, along with my dad, enjoy doing uh, homesteading type things as far as raising bees for their honey. And Stephanie also has an herb garden and she raises fruits and vegetables. And um, anyway, so Stephanie's babies have come over to visit and that's not a problem. As long as we can keep her intact males out of our pastures, we have no problem with her does visiting at all. Uh, the only thing is, Stephanie feels horrible about it. They're breaking out of her fences and coming over here. And so today, Stephanie tries to make amends. She tries to make everything right. And uh, I think that you'll enjoy this video. Oh, and by the way, stay tuned to the end when you can see Lester lather himself up. Hey, I'm a Survivor fans. This is Stephanie Dinman here, coming to you from my kitchen. Um, so please excuse the mess. We live here and it's got food everywhere and the kids are home from school. But I wanted to show you today how I make some of my products from home and how I incorporate some of our bees wax. And I feel like I should probably make a I'm sorry gift for Jamie and Lester. Maybe a peace offering um, because my goats have been just a, a terror for them. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some soap today and I wanna show you how I do it. It's really easy, really simple. Um, and maybe it'll turn out good and I'll be able to get back in their good graces. So follow along. Okay, so I promise I'm not doing anything illegal. It probably looks a little scary, but I have all of my things out here that I'm going to use for soap making. Um, one thing that I want to tell you is that you definitely, if you're gonna try this at home, should dedicate some of these materials strictly for soap making. So this crock pot here I have is strictly for soap making. I don't cook any food in it because we actually use some chemicals that um, can be harmful if ingested or deadly. So this stays separate away from all of my cooking stuff. Um, and I only use it for soap making. I've pre-measured to save some time uh, a lot of my ingredients, but I'll explain what they are. Uh, what we've got, what we're gonna make today is a basic recipe. It is a rosemary soap. It has coconut oil. This is the coconut oil, olive oil, and I'll include the recipe um, separately after this is over. Distilled water, lye, which is pretty dangerous, so be very, very careful, and my beeswax from my bees. So I've chopped it up in um, the correct amounts that I need so uh, that I have it already. And I just have my bag here of my rendered beeswax from my honeybees that I can just break off sections as I need it. I have my immersion blender here. My scale is over here. I've got some rosemary. I have some essential rosemary oil that's safe for um, soap making. Um, my Nutribullet, because we're gonna pulverize these in a little bit, and a thermometer that goes up to 550 degrees. A few spare bowls, measuring cups, a spoon that I use for soap making, and um, just some extra cups around just in case I need them. So we will start the process now. Okay, so our first step is we are going to mix the lye and the water. I'll just show you a little bit of you can see I've moved over to my kitchen table because um, I we need to do this in a well ventilated area uh, the fumes can be quite strong also if this is your first time or you're nervous about it it can burn your skin so wear gloves or safety eyeglasses whatever you need to do to make sure that you feel comfortable with mixing these chemicals because this is the most dangerous part so don't inhale it don't get close to it it gets extremely hot when it's mixed. And I'll show you the temperature here in a second when we do mix it together. 
Okay, I'm gonna pour my water in here first. And it's super important that you add the lye to the water and not the water to the lye. Um, if you add the water to the lye, it will explode on you. So we're gonna slowly pour this in and it's going to create a chemical reaction. And I'm going to sit here and mix this until it is completely dissolved and the water turns clear. Okay, so it is pretty much cleared up, but as you can see, there is steam coming off of this bowl. This is extremely, extremely hot. All I've added was the lye to the distilled water and it is extremely hot. So let's get the thermometer and see exactly how hot it is. By the way, I do have my window open for extra ventilation because the fumes that come off of this and the steam can be very, very harmful if you, if they're ingested or smelled. Okay, the next step after we've combined our lye and our water is we are going to um, get our crock pot ready to add all of those ingredients. The longest thing is going to be this beeswax to melt down, so I'm gonna start this now. I already have my crock pot on high, so I'm gonna put this directly in there so we can start melting. And then I'm going to add my other oils to it. This is olive oil. It's your standard olive oil that you can get at any grocery store. So I just buy it in the big cans um, and I've measured out the correct measurements that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in. And I'm going to add in my um, coconut oil, which I can't do with one hand. So I'm going to pause this here for a second. Okay. I have added in my coconut oil, the beeswax, and the olive oil. This is the coconut oil here. Beeswax is down here. I need this to all dissolve. Now once this is all completely dissolved and all the fats are together as one, we are going to then add in our lye. And this soap recipe is actually a, um, it's a hot process, so there's two different types of soap making. Uh, soap making can be a cold process or a hot process, and they both essentially start out the same. You melt them all together. Um, cold process just means that you, once you've heated them all up, you bring it to trace, which I'll explain in a minute. And um, then once it's set at trace, you take it off the heat and you put it in molds and then they have to cure for about four to six weeks. Well, hot process because I am, um, well, I'm impatient, but I want it quicker. You can actually cook your soap down and um, put it in a mold after it's cooked down um, and it will harden and then you can use it sometimes as quick as 24 hours later. So there are pros and cons to both types of soaps. Um, the hardiness of the soap, um, sometimes they can last longer or lather better if they're cold processed so they have a better shelf life but uh, I'll just continue to stir this and wait for this to melt down and then we'll be back here in a second. Okay, while we continue to wait for this beeswax to completely melt down, I've kind of tried to, as I stir it, chop it up in little bits so it melts a little bit quicker. And just um, a pro note, if you do have large chunks of beeswax, if you want to melt it beforehand in a microwave or what have you, you can melt it quicker and then also put it in the crock pot so you're not waiting for it to completely melt in the crock pot. Um, I've got time to spare so it doesn't bother me just to wait for it to um, melt on its own. But while we wait, I'm going to, um, here I've brought over our lye mixture so be very careful that's still very hot. Um, I'm going to now um, chop up this rosemary because we're going to incorporate this rosemary. I got this from my garden. It smells amazing. We're going to chop this up and um, I'm actually just going to use my Nutribullet to kind of just make it almost into a powder. Um, it's because I don't want large, large chunks in the soap just because once it gets um, lathery and you rub it on your skin, I don't want it to be too abrasive. This isn't going to be like an exfoliant or anything, but it is going to give it uh, natural oils. 
um, as well as our essential oils that we're going to add to it, plus a really nice natural fragrance. And it'll give it a visual appeal too because it'll have some rosemary uh, flecks within it. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to take my rosemary sprig and just basically run my fingers down the stem to pull all of the rosemary off and drop it in my cup. Homemade soaps are really, really nice because you know what is in them and then you know that you're, there's not a whole lot of harsh chemicals or additives to it. So I like to make my own soap mainly because I suffer from eczema. Um, so you can make natural soaps and soaps without fragrance. So I've got this here and I'm gonna go ahead and blend it. Sorry, that's kind of loud. All right, so we've got nice, small, oh, it smells so good rosemary bits and there's some larger ones in there too so that's nice so it gives it a little bit of um, different texture within the soaps okay this beeswax has completely melted in with the coconut oil as well as the olive oil this is all that's in here now is coconut oil olive oil and beeswax the beeswax was straight from my hives so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the lye mixture and i'm not going to do this with one hand, so I'm going to have to set you up so you can see. I do not want this to splash me, so. Do you see how it's already changing colors? To like a light creamy yellow, at least to make sure it's fully incorporated. Okay, I've completely blended the lye mixture in with the oil. And so now we're gonna take the immersion blender here and we're gonna do something that's going to turn it into like a pudding-like consistency. And what we wanna look for is something called trace. So trace is where you can basically draw a line in the uh, liquid and the line stays. So right now the liquid is pretty, you can't draw a line and nothing stays in this. It's just like, like a liquid. So when we're gonna, and, and every soap is different. Sometimes you can reach trace pretty quickly. Sometimes you have to do this for 10 minutes. So with this soap, in my experience, um, it, it comes to trace pretty quick. So we shouldn't have to do this very long, but uh, I'll show you exactly how that happens. Okay, see how quickly that happens? So it's starting to thicken up. It's actually even gotten even more light, uh, lighter in color. And we're already reaching that trace stage. So where you can draw a line through it and it actually holds its, um, its position in, in the soap. So this is a, we're right about where we want to be. The smell, it doesn't smell like anything uh, at this point because I haven't added any fragrance and I haven't had added anything else to it. So really you could just leave this just like it is, cook it and um, hot process the soap and it would turn into just a scentless soap that would lather and you can wash your body with it. Um, but I'm going to, um, after the soap cooks, at the very, very end, I'm going to add in our essential oils and our, um, our rosemary flex so that it, I'll add that in at the very end. So for now, I'm just going to cook this for about 45 minutes to an hour and you're going to see uh, how it changes over time. Okay, our soap has turned into something that looks a lot like jelly. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. It's very shiny. Um, kind of looks maybe like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, a brown Vaseline maybe. So depending on what type of oils you use and what type of um, scents you use and what kind of additives you use, really, you know, the colors may change. So I'm going to stir this around real quick. Also one thing I did not mention before is that you need to watch your pot 
because sometimes depending on how much oil you have in it, um, it may overflow and explode. <laughs> and then you're left with a big mess. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit. I've turned my crock pot off. By the way, I was cooking it on eight hours low. And um, it didn't take very long. Um, it took about 40 minutes to get to this stage. I want to let this cool down a little bit before I add in my extra stuff, my essential oils and my rosemary. So I'm just going to let this, there's also a flash temp. So not to overwhelm you, but there's uh, quite a few different things that you, you would need to research depending on what essential oils you want to add in, if you want to add in any essential oils, because some essential oils will burn off quicker than others in higher temps, and you won't even be able to smell the essential oil that you put into it because it just basically evaporates. So you want to make sure that you get your soap down to um, you know a cooler temp so that the, uh, the essential oils that you add in will take to the soap and you can actually smell them. Okay. So I've let this cool for probably as long as it was cooking and it is still got a shiny consistency, um, almost like a mashed potato type. Don't eat it though. And I kind of just really eyeball it, um, mix it in really well. Um, you can, add as little or as like I guess as it's you would like uh, I probably that was probably maybe a tablespoon worth or so of the rosemary pieces so I'm just going to add in I know it looks like a lot but okay so I've mixed in the herbs and the essential oils and I really mixed it I was Pretty vigorous with it so I just want to make sure it's all incorporated um, and mixed in really really well so um, now I'm gonna scoop this into these molds here I've got this one and if I have any left over I've got these over here that I I can use too as like individual bars but this is like one big loaf and once this hardens completely I'll pop this out of this silicone mold and I will cut it into pieces big loaf but you can find a there are there's a good section a soap making section in Hobby Lobby as well that has some things I don't believe they have lye um, so lye I get from Amazon um, a lot of my other like my cocoa butter shea butter I have mango butter some some of the different oils that I can't find in stores I'll order it from Amazon too Amazon's a good resource this is what it looks like sitting in the mold and already it's it's warm to touch but um, it doesn't stick to your fingers or anything so we are on day two we've let this sit overnight it is a rosemary soap um, so I will show you how I get it out and how I cut it so this little box this mold basically that helps keep its shape just the silicone, the soap is in the silicone mold, and we'll peel it out now. So we basically just peel this whole soap bar out of its mold. And on day two, it's still going to have some moisture content, so it's going to be a little sticky. There you go. So the top is going to look a little bit more rustic. Then the bottom, the bottom is going to have a nice square shape here. The top is, I don't know if you can see it or not. You can see the rosemary flecks throughout the soap. It has a nice tan color. And I've got two different options here for cutting. I've got my ribbed edge and then I've got the straight edge. I really like the ribbed edge to begin. So I'm going to start cutting and I'm just going to cut at the very, very edge just to give this edge a nice look to a nice uniform look and then I save these little pieces I keep these little tiny slivers as like hand soap by the um, by the sink but this is what it looks like and now I'm just gonna cut them into what I think would be a good bar soap size so 
So here you go. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with it next. You could essentially create a whole year's worth of soap, wouldn't have to go buy anything at the store. So it is worth it to do your own crafts um, at home and make your own things. It's, it's pretty neat to be able to do that for yourself. Now, as an added touch, I have printed out some I'm a Survivor labels and I am going to make them a little bit more of a gift. So I have some, I have a roll of this brown butcher craft paper that I've cut into strips that I'm going to now put together for my soap. So I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Okay, so this is what I will give to Lester and Jamie. I'm a survivor, rosemary herb soothing soap. And it smells amazing. So hopefully they like it. I don't know what I'll have to come up next when my goats eventually linger over there. So I hope you like this tutorial. And um, if you have any questions, just leave a, your questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. I am looking at a gift. Uh, it looks like some bars of soap that we have been gifted by my sister-in-law, Stephanie. And she says it's a peace offering for all of her goats who keep coming into our pastures. And that was totally uncalled for. But you know what? I'm going to actually take this now and uh, put it to the test. So you guys follow along. And this might be the first and only time you'll ever get a chance to see Lester in the shower. All right. So we're going to try this out. Allow me to lab it up there for a second. Folks, I'll need two hands for this, obviously. What are you doing? Well, obviously, Jamie, I don't have the pond guy body, <laughs> and I'm not built like Jake. So we're going to make sure that we have one simple rule. You keep that camera right here. Can we my This is Stephanie Soap. I want to show you all what I've done. I've taken it and I'm lathering it all to my hands. And as you can watch, you can see the lather that is created. You seeing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what I I can uh, I can feel the texture. I'm not the best as far as smelling things. Everyone knows that I'm semi nose blind. But you tell me how does it smell? I think it smells amazing. Now I'm lucky to be a man. Are we still okay? Where you keep me nice yep. and hot? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna spin around. <laughs> You didn't see anything, did you? Okay, you know what? If I had the body by Jake or the whatever, anyway, what I was saying was what's cool about men is that we don't have to have. Don't you count on my bottles. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude because, you know, I love you for who you are, but there are seven different bottles of shampoos. You know how I'm lucky? Look, one size fits all. Folks. Oh my God. One size fits all. And Stephanie, this rocks. How's it smell? It smells amazing. Is it too girly for me? No. It's very neutral, actually. Anyway, you can see from the uh, the lather over here how well it lathers up. And like I said, I can feel a little texture to it, but not so much that it's like exfoliating. Wait a uh, minute. You know that word? I know that guys don't do it. If you're a guy, I may know the word, but I don't do it. So don't even think... Remember, Jenny, here, keep your I, eyes up here. I got you. All right.